<laughs> All right, guys, I think I'm live. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, make sure you chat in or join along in the chat and, you know, give me your opinion on different stuff, ask questions and all of that. And I forgot I have a camera there. Um, so, yeah, I think this would be fun. My first thing I'll be doing is a little bit of a proof of concept. I want to I have an idea that I want to try and see if it can actually work for a future project of mine. And if that does work out um, and if I get through it fast enough, then uh, I'm going to try this week's code pen challenge because I think that'd be a lot of fun. Hi, Kristen. And I see a bunch of people coming in in the chat. So that's great. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. I, am, I ran a poll about what time would be best. And this one actually got the second top result. But I usually do it at night. And the people majority of people wanted 930 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's when I'll usually be doing them just because it works better for my own schedule. But I had the opportunity to do one at a different time slot. So I thought it would be fun. And this one got second place. So I thought it would be a good time and give some different people a, a chance to join in. Um, I think there is a bit of a delay between the chat. So if it takes me a bit to um, get back to you, just you know, hold in there. I should uh, be able to answer some questions and stuff. So uh, just really, really fast. Um, over here is the rough design that I want to do. So it's not uh, pretty right now, <laughs> but basically I'm going to have some sort of header, uh, a footer, and this type of thing, and I'll be using grid, let's turn off this sort of ugly grid that I have on there right now. Um, the idea is that I want to have, using CSS grid to sort of set something up that looks a bit like this, this would be an image, um, but I want to use position sticky to have the image stay in place. So as I'm scrolling down, the image would be following um, along. And then with position sticky, if everything works out properly, what would happen is when we get to this one, it, the first image would get pushed out of the way, and then this one would sort of take its place. Um, it's not too complicated. I think it'll work well. <laughs> I'm really hoping it does. Um, just, you know, because that would be a lot. Um, well, it'd be pretty nice if it did work out well, obviously. Um, I have the chat opened here, but I'm having trouble seeing it because it's really small and there's more people chatting. Um, I am a bit confused by, whoops, Critical Hiker, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people here in the chat, so I'm going to have to have this open on the side here so I can actually follow along. So hi, everybody. Thank you all for joining in. I don't know how many people we are now, but I think... It's the most active chat we've ever had. No, I'm also at the most people I've ever had. So thank you, everybody, for uh, joining in. Um, okay, so let's get started. And um, so we'll go back to Firefox over here. Um, so basically, I have my header. That I'll, you know, we'll put an H1 in there. This, uh, this is the title. Let me move this over and make the code a bit bigger for now. Um, Dexter, the... I'll be using, I can take a look at some Flexbox along the way too. I think I'll be using some Flexbox when I get to the code pen challenge. Um, so, but mostly grid with grid and Flexbox we'll be using in this one. Um, if I, this application is Adobe XD. So this is just, a, I mean, this is a really, really basic mockup. You can get Adobe XD for free now with a free Adobe account. So that's really cool. Um, it will help them. Um, they're doing it just to try and get more people on board of using it, I'm guessing, but uh, it's pretty awesome that you can have it for free. Okay, so I'm going to have my header, um, which is going to be that bar at the top. Now, I'm not sure. Let's go and do my footer at the bottom because we all know we need a footer. I am going to be using SAS in this, but I'll be keeping it to a minimum and I'll try and explain as much as I can. I just It's proof of concept. I want to be working kind of quick, so um, I will be using SAS in this one. Um, footer and what's in my footer? Let's just write footer for now so I can see it. Um, now the weir, weir, I'm having trouble speaking. This is what I can usually edit out when I'm doing my videos, when I stumble on my words. Um, I have sort of, I guess one big box or would just each one of these be its own? I think each one of these will just be its own sort of section or card. I'll call it, it's not really a card, but for lack of a better word, and for the moment, I'll call that a card. Um, do -do. Kaylin, you're asking for a 
video on CSS transforms and skewed. Yeah, skewed stuff's kind of weird. Um, just because when it skews, it does weird stuff. Um, I could definitely take a look at uh, some of those in a future video. I'm, I'm going to be doing um, some SVG videos starting next week. Um, just the very basics of SVG, doing some really simple things with it, just to uh, get an understanding of it, but that could come uh, after that. I could start looking maybe into something like that. Um, I, ben Zigar, I do use VS Code normally for, like, I'm working on my own personal site now. For that, I use VS Code. Um, for this, I find it easier to use CodePen because then I can share the code much easier. People can come into the CodePen and play with the CodePen and all of that. So for me, it's a little bit, um, I don't know, I think it's a bit more user friendly for that too. Um, less windows to be jumping around and less setup. So it's also easier for me just for a quick video. Um, it takes a lot less setup. Yeah, if you don't know SAS, don't worry, I'm going to keep it really, really, really minimum. <laughs> You'll be able to follow along, don't worry, and I'll explain everything um, that I'm doing for that. Uh, so for my card, I'm going to need an image. So I'm just going to do an image with a class of card image. And like usual, I'm just going to use uh, on splash it. We'll go with 400 by 400. Well, 400 by 400, I just have to do that. And I should get an image on... I always spell this wrong every single time I write it. There we go. Okay, I have an image. It's probably a little bit big for what I want to do. Image, and then I think I'm going to need a text box. Uh, so card text, well, I'll just call it card body. Uh, my body can have a title on it, I guess. Uh, H2 card title. This is the title. And then, uh, whoops, uh, card. No, just I'll just throw in a bunch of paragraphs in here. Uh, we'll do okay. Card text. Card uh, text. I'm just gonna do regular paragraphs. Uh, we'll do say four paragraphs. And off screen here, I just have my lower mipsum, so I can just paste that in uh, really fast. Copy. And remember guys, don't be scared about asking questions and stuff as I'm doing this, please. It's one of the fun things of uh, doing a live videos. I can answer questions on the fly and uh, always improvise and do things that I wasn't planning on doing. Okay, and ideally I'd have more than one of these, but let's just style it up a little bit and get it looking good. For ya, hi. Thanks for joining us. Anyone else? Sorry. Uh, the uh, critical hacker, the automatic thing, it's called Emmet. If you're using VS Code, it comes installed. And if you're using any other code editor, it's really easy to install it. Um, so basically, if I need a paragraph, I can just do the tag. Or like a div, I could just write div. Or if I need a section, I can write section. And then push tab on the keyboard. It also, in CodePen, is automatic. It's in there with CodePen. Now, if I need um, a div with a class, I can do, which is whenever you need it. I just have to do um, dot, so say dot card, and then push tab, and it gives me the card. Um, if I need a section with a class, section intro tab, and it gives it to me with that on there. Other things like images, it will automatically put some of the required attributes, which is really handy. Same with the link. I love doing it for linking CSS because it sort of gives me the stuff I need, and it places the cursor where I need it to, which is nice. Um, and if you need to do like paragraph times five, you can do that. So that will give me five paragraphs. And even you could do like UL. Inside my UL, I need a list item times five. And inside of there, I need uh, links with, I don't know, I didn't have link or something like that. And it can pump out the whole thing. So that can speed things up a lot for you. So that's uh, Emmet. I think it's with one T. I think it's like that if you want to look it up. You can also do some stuff in CSS uh, with it as well, but I tend not to do that. I don't know why. Um, all right, so uh, let's keep going with this. Um, so I'm going to style up my things here a little bit. Um, so my headers give me nothing fancy. 
Uh, just I'm just gonna give things colors for now. Uh, dark gray, back uh, color white. Why is dark gray lighter than gray? <laughs> Does that make sense to anybody? How did they come up with that uh, idea? Padding of, I don't know, 2M for now. And if you don't already do this, before, star, after, just to make your life a lot easier, uh, box, sizing, border, box, which just makes padding and border included in the width instead of adding to the width. Um, I do this on everything because it makes my life so much easier. Uh, yeah, Emmet would work also in Sublime Text, but I think you'd have to find an extension or add-on or uh, whatever it is. Um, and O2CO2, yeah, it will be uploaded uh, later in the week. I'm recording. Oh, I didn't record it. Uh, it's going to go up anyway. It'll be at 720, though, instead of 1080. Uh, gray with an E. <laughs> we can do gray with an E, too. <laughs> they both work because both spellings are accepted. Um, all right. So, um, I forgot where I was, but that's okay. Um, so my header, I'm just going to, as I said, give everything a color for now. Uh, background, actually, header footer can both be the same for the moment and my card I'm not going to do anything fancy I just want to give it a background of pink for a second so I can see it properly um, because I want to come on my body and set up my grid here um, so my body my grid so I need to have critical hacker thank you again so generous um really really appreciate it thank you if I come back to my design over here what I want, I was hearing some weird noises there. Um, what I want to do, and this isn't the grid I'm going to be using. This is just the default grid that um, came on here. Um, can you guys hear the knocking in the background? <laughs> There's someone doing some construction or something like that uh, in the back. So. Um, I just, the idea is I'm going to have some empty space on the sides and then my main area. And then this is going to get its own layout. So this is just my own card. So nothing too complicated here, actually. Um, I just need to do display grid. I need to do uh, grid. I'm just going to do auto flow over uh, min max. I've, I used to just do um, one FR for my outsides. Uh, and I'll explain this in a second. Min max, min max, min max. Um, so on the outside, two columns. Uh, this is grid like this is shorthand. So the grid is a shorthand. You can do a lot of stuff in the shorthand. It's a little bit like the the background shorthand. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but basically, what I'm doing the first one before the slash is my template rows, and the second one down here after the slash is my template columns spelt properly. Um, so just this is my rows and this is my columns and it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, set up everything here. Um, a few questions here so I'm just going to take a quick little have to scroll up. You guys are very active. Thank you so much for being active. I appreciate it and it's nice seeing so many people in here. Um, Paul has asked what the best way to name colors is. It depends. Um, I use SAS, so I tend to just use hex code because it's faster to copy and paste it in. Um, but that's because in SAS, I can do something like um, color RGBA black 0.5, and it's going to work um, because SAS turns this into the RGB. So if I go and then look at my compiled CSS, it, SAS has turned that into an RGBA value. Um, so I tend to use hex just because it's faster and but um, you'll see RGB. Some people are really big on HSL just because HSL, um, there are some benefits of HSL as well, but I find it confusing to work with, so I tend to avoid it. <laughs> um, but it's, I guess, what you're most comfortable with, but RGBA is probably the most common one that you'll see these days. 
Um, I have been wanting to make a video on naming conventions. Um, Miloslav, and sorry if I say anybody's name wrong, Miloslav, Miloslav. Um, I, do, I do plan on having one eventually. I'm not sure when it will be coming out though. And um, the grid auto flow. Oh yeah, auto flow. Um, it's there's how the um, the things are arranged. Um, I could even just have auto here, to be honest, and it would still work. Um, the auto flow deals with the way the um, the things on my rows arrange. Um, you know, I could even do like a dense and stuff on here, but uh, maybe I could play around with that actually when we get to the. Um, the, the code pen challenge after. I think it'd be easier to demonstrate how that's working uh, with their layout. Um, just catching up on a couple more questions. Bojan Bohan is asking, is it better to make a hamburger menu with JavaScript or CSS or it doesn't matter? It depends. Um, I've started doing it with CSS with like a checkbox that you can't see that gets checked just because I think, you know, I try to avoid, I, I tend to avoid JavaScript a bit, um, unless I need it, I guess is the way I see it. And you can do it without it and you can still have much of the same functionality, if not the exact same functionality for a hamburger menu. It is a little bit harder to set up initially, but once you know what you're doing, it's really not that bad. Um, and someone else asked about a, uh, videos on advanced JavaScript. A lot of people want those, and I just don't know where to start. And yeah, so maybe one day, <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um, I, I could do a little bit of JavaScript somewhere, maybe in here. We'll see. Um, yeah, maybe. I also had a lot of people in the poll for this video asking if I could do uh, React videos. I wish I could do React videos. I, I don't know React. Um, something I'd, I wouldn't mind learning. I'm sort of learning, leaning towards learning Vue instead, but I know React is a million times more popular, so um, we'll see. Um, so going back to this, what I used to do was uh, set this up as 1fr, 1fr, and then I had my min max in here, which I'll just put like 100, 1000 for a second, just so I have something that's working. Um, and then I wouldn't have, I would make it so most things don't go into these empty areas. But the problem with 1fr, 1fr, well, now there's content in there, so it's not working exactly how I want, but it would sometimes turn to zero. And I find lately, um, if I do 1m or 2m or whatever I want, 1fr, it makes it so the spaces on the outside can't get any smaller, like they stop at 1m. So it means um, this could work really well at a mobile screen size, even if I had like six different things in here. Right now I'm doing a really simple layout, um, but if I had like, oh man, they're doing some construction <laughs> just outside my house, so sorry if there's any weird noises. Um, so let's just, let's set this up and I'll explain that a little more. Um, min max, well, I don't know, let's just do like 600 pixels, 1000 pixels for now. I'm just throwing some numbers in there. Um, Anyway, now you can sort of see like this, the minimum size of it is 1M. So on a mobile screen, that could be good. And then at the bigger sizes, um, it sort of fixes itself. My header and footer, grid column, uh, will be 1 over negative 1. So it goes from the start all the way to the end. I'm also purposely using Firefox in here so we can actually see our grid. Uh, da, 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 layout grid, turn it on. Um, so I don't know how easy that is to see, but we, there we go. We can see our grid lines a little bit. Um, so that's going from one side all the way to the other. My footer is going from one side all the way to the other now. So with the grid numbers, they go in like reverse order. So like one, two, three, four, and negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So you can use either one. So if you want something to go from the start to the end, just one over negative one will make it span the whole screen or the whole grid. Um, and my card will have a grid column of 2 over 4, uh, 2 over 3. I can just do 2 then, and it will just span the 1. There we go, 2. Um, so this whole thing I was talking about with the min-max is now, at minimum, I have 1m there. So the smallest it can be. So on mobile, that would just, you know, it would make sure that I keep that space that I want. But on bigger screens, once that max in the middle of a thousand pixels has been reached here, then it's not, you know, that space will just grow and accommodate. So 
Oh man, I'm really sorry about all the banging. <laughs> I hope, I don't know how, if you guys can hear it. I know I hear things on my mic louder than um, usual. Um, I just had a question about the, the star here. This means select everything. I do have a video that mentions it. Um, if you look in my videos for advanced CSS selectors, I think is what I called it. This just selects absolutely everything. The only thing it won't select is the before and the after of everything. So I just add this in to make sure that my, if I'm using a pseudo element, it also gets selected. Um, so I'm just selecting everything and changing the default box sizing of it. So my padding is on the inside or my padding's included in the width of something, um, just because if not, it can kind of get annoying sometimes. I'm just, yeah, every single possible selector has been selected by doing that. Okay. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I just find by doing it like this, I don't need a container anymore. It makes my markup much cleaner because I can, I don't need like a container div. That's awesome. I like not having to have a container div. Um, so my card, I also want this to have a display grid. And this is where I don't know if what I want to work is going to work because I don't know how well the sticky works with grid. I'm assuming it works. Um, so let's display grid and then I want a grid template. All right, again, let's just do grid of uh, auto flow over. Um, I'm just going to do this as like hard set values. I'm not worrying about um, Uh, let's do 300 or was my image 300 pixels it was so 300 pixels space 1fr to just take up whatever space is available for my text because th this whole thing is a thousand this is always going to be 300 so that can like shrink and grow my text accordingly and I need some space there so grid gap of 1m um, should give me my space I'll make it a little bigger too should add some padding. I, I, I won't have a background on this actually. Will I? No, I'm not going to have a background on that. So we can do that. Um, for the spacing here, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be grid gap is amazing. Not having to deal with margins and padding as much to separate stuff is really really nice, um, and it's something I've been playing with a bit. So to show you how I've been playing with it, um, especially like for consistency and stuff. So I have my card. Let's just make a whole bunch of cards. There we go. Yeah, for sure. Um, Anum just asked how um, for the, um, what was I going to say? I have to look again. Uh, to make CSS, CSS grid responsive, <laughs> you can make it super responsive. It even takes away the need for some media queries depending on the layout and the type of stuff you're doing. Um, I find it's really, really awesome. Um, take it easy, Critical Hacker. Thanks once again for the for everything. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you around again. And again, the recording of this will be up uh, live. It'll have to be this one because I forgot to record it as once I started the stream. Uh, but that's okay. Um... How would you make with GS if you type in a number instead of text an input to show Bedjich? Sorry if I don't get your name right. Um, I'm not sure I understand your question. So if you could just ask it again, uh, I'll gladly see if I can answer it. Um, actually, I'm going to give my cards a background again. <laughs> I just took that off, but um, just to show you if uh, so background because it's going to highlight more what's going to happen here. Um, so on my uh, body here where I have my grid, I can do a grid gap, but I don't want the, like if I did grid gap, I'm going to make it like too big, just a, like a massive gap. Um, it's also going to put spaces on the left and the right too. What happened? Um, so it's adding a gap here and a gap here. So these areas that are sort of with these lines in it is my gap. So it's creating this massive gap all around, which I don't want. I don't want a gap between this. This is just filler space anyway. So uh, what I can do is grid row gap. And it's only going to put the gap on my rows. And it's going to control the space between my cards. 
That's too big, but maybe like a 5M would, might work a little bit better. Cool, so that looks a little bit better. There we go. So that's nice because I don't need to put margin bottom. I don't have to figure out where the space is coming from. It's all being controlled from my grid, which is really, really nice. Um, I find just makes things a lot easier to control um, with everything. Cool. Dario, do I hate IE because <laughs> I'm focusing on grid? Yeah, uh, a little bit. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's kind of annoying that we, we were, were stuck with IE 11 never getting updated. It would be nice if they could sort of push one last update just to get it on par with where we currently are. But again, then Grid's going to get another update and it wouldn't follow along. So I get why they're not bothering. And it is a really small part of the user base now. Again, like I said in, was it my last video when I was talking about browser support? It depends on your audience. So sometimes it'd be 1% of the people visiting and sometimes it's 25% or bigger. Um, you might be dealing with people that are, I work at a school, our computers get updated very rarely. So, uh, some of this until recently, I couldn't use grid at school because the, with the browsers we were using didn't support it. So that was fun. Um, Paris, yes, I have a video on M's and REMs. You can do, I think you can search. If you go to my channel itself, you can search on there. Just put MREM and it'll pop up for sure. Uh, it's not comprehensive, but it sort of goes into how I use it, um, which I think um, can be helpful. Okay, so this isn't a very sexy, but again, this is just for proof of concept. So I have all my cards there, and what I want, I might have to, let's just go on my body. I don't know. I'd have to get more text, so instead of getting more text, I'm going to do font size uh, 1.25 rem, line height of uh, 1.6 is usually my starting point. There we go. The whole point is here, I want to be able to scroll quite a bit um, before I get an even... I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Normally, I wouldn't do this. I should have had more text. Um, margin bottom of like 3m just to space stuff out more it's cheating a little bit but i just want to make sure i have like a lot of white space there um so i gave these a class of card image i believe yep card image okay so um let's just come on do 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 card so this is where uh, sas can be nice so card img um, so what this is doing, and this is about the only time I'm going to really be using SAS in this, I guess, is just for nesting. Um, this would be the same as coming down here and writing out card img, and then writing some stuff here. So if you're using SAS, you can nest, and the ampersand means take whatever is here. So take whatever, so it's just doing that for me. Um, so that's a nice way of doing it, and it outputs a nice clean uh, CSS when you do this. So I'll look at the outputted CSS in one second. Um, so on this, I want to try a position, position, and I'm really hoping this works because I don't feel like troubleshooting it. And we'll do a top of, we'll try zero just to see if this actually works. And to go look at the outputted CSS, um, we can see here, doo -doo -doo, it just does, I have my card. And then I just have my card image there. Um, and I do have auto prefixer on, so we're getting that. Um, so now, ideally, when I scroll, when this reaches the top, or actually, before I do sticky, yeah, I'm going to do sticky, because if not, it would screw up all my images. So if you've never seen position sticky before, um, it will stick, when this gets to the top of zero, it will stick to the top of the screen. So it should become like a position. There we go. So now it sticks to the top. So we used to have to use JavaScript for that. Now we don't. And if this works properly, when this image touches this one, this one will push that one out of the way. Fingers crossed. Ah, it worked. <laughs> nice. Whoop. So that's cool. I really didn't know if that would work or not. That's fun. Okay, good. Um, I don't know if I'd go exactly with this layout. But the, um, I want to be. My idea here is just to have be able to have a bit of content here. Um, the alternative, actually, which would probably be better, now that I'm looking at this in action, um, would be to have very little text. 
and have a bunch of images. Um, but I would have to really change the markup for this. Hmm. I'm going to try the alternative though. Let's just delete all these extra cards that I have. Because I think it's going to look better. And this, um, I listened to a podcast recently and I wish I remember which one it was. But it was talking about the experience that somebody has on it. And the whole idea behind this was to look at the experience of someone when they're on it. How things, as they're scrolling down the page, the experience that they're going through. And not just from like a UX perspective, but just like the journey. Like what's the journey that they go on through the site. Um, and the fact that we can do stuff like this now without JavaScript is really, really fun. But it's, you know, how can we change the experience and make it a journey as they travel down the website? And you can do that as things are scrolling. We see it a lot with, like, things popping in, stuff like that. But I wanted to try and explore other avenues and other things we could do. Uh, Chris Barker is asking, eh, besides Internet Explorer, what are the disadvantages of Grid? I honestly can't think of any, to be fair. Um, this... Yeah, I mean, there's a bit of syntax to learn. It's kind of complicated compared to other stuff. Um, but if you figured out Flexbox, you can definitely figure out Grid. Um, all right, you didn't miss too much. I missed a bit, but uh, I'm still going to be going for quite a while here. And uh, whatever I will be putting this up um, on the channel. So if you want to go back, uh, once I put it up, you can see what you did miss. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a um, card images, I guess. We'll be fine. And in there, I'm going to put my images. And I'm going to put a whole bunch of images. Copy, paste, 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 paste. Um, okay. And so I should have a whole bunch of images. Now they're, they're stacking on top. One thing with position sticky that I find personally really, really weird, um, if they're children like this, so if like they're, they're siblings, instead of pushing each other out of the way, they just stack on top of each other. So you can see those, they're not like, one's not pushing the other one out of the way, it's stacking on top of it. So if it's sibling elements, they stack, but if they're part of another like you have a parent that has one sticky and then another parent that has another sticky element as a child then it will push things out of the way like I did before and like I'm about to do so it's kind of weird just something to be aware of if ever you run into this type of weird sort of issue um okay so I'm going to change this by making it's going to be my card uh no not even this can go away actually and it's this one, uh, no, and text. Uh, was it text or body? It was body, wasn't it? Which will get the position sticky, but my top will also change. Uh, top, I don't know. I'll just make a big number for now. So the idea now is once it gets there, the text, I screwed it up. Card, card images, it is card body. Why is my body not sticking? Or is it too big of a number? Let's just do top zero and see what happens. No, it should work anyway. Hmm? Why is that not sticking? This is <laughs> card body. If anyone can figure out why not, let me know in the comments. I'd gladly know what I did wrong, but let's go and do a little bit of diving in here. Uh, card body. Position sticky is working. Top zero. So why is it not working? <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's just, I'm gonna, I don't think this will fix my problem, but I'm gonna add another card. Copy. Paste. Is it sticking? to the top of the wrong thing. I almost feel like it's sticking within the grid instead of sticking. But why would it stick within the parent? Like my, it worked when I did my images.
Yeah, the body's the whole column. I want this whole thing to stop, like not move. I want this to stay until the next one comes up. Shouldn't that work? Just for fun, what if I change this to uh, text, which is, did I give my paragraphs? I didn't do anything. Let's just try the title. I don't see why this would change anything, but, oh, it does. <laughs> so the idea there, and then see that would push out, but I want, how come I can do the title, but I can't do the whole column? Wrap, but why would I need to wrap that? Let's just see. Test. Test. Position sticky. I don't see why this would change anything. Oh, the second one worked. Just not the first one. Is that from the test or is that from this here? Okay, so test didn't... Curious. <laughs> that, that one... Did I screw something up in my... No, okay, <laughs> just making sure that I had a card body on that one, and I have a card body on that one. Oh, thank you, Ivan, yes. It's the same height as my images. Ah, let me, I'll give it background blue. Um, or it should still stick to the top. Oh, why is that one not the same height as my images? Why are they not the same? But yeah, that's what's causing it, um, because of the height of it. So um, because it's in a grid, I should do uh, align self start. Thank you so much, Ivan. I don't know why they were different from each other. Haha, -ha, yes. Nice. Uh, I wish I'd thought of that earlier, but I'm glad we got it to work. Um, so yes, yeah, yeah, so your position sticky is this what's doing. So it sticks once it gets this far from the top of the screen. So I get to zero M, there's some margin on the top of that. So including the margin, it sticks to the top until the next thing with it comes and then that gets and pushes it out of the way. Um, I think this is a bit nicer. I mean, the other thing was nice too, where the image wasn't moving, but the text was scrolling by. I thought that worked well. Um, but I think this could be a little bit nicer of a journey type of thing where you have the short paragraph um, so let's just change this to like five. So we get the short paragraph, even we can make that quite a bit bigger. Um, so you get this short paragraph and it just sort of like follows you. So you can be reading and scrolling a little bit and seeing obviously in the real world, you'd probably want different pictures coming by as you were doing this. Um, I'm just playing around with this top thing to try and center it on the screen. It's not the best way to be doing it, but um, it's working. So that would do it. Then the next one comes in, so it pushes it out of the way, and that one gets stuck in place. Um, so that's kind of fun. And then obviously you can have as much, as many of these things um, as you want. Let me just tidy up my HTML. And I'm, I'm really glad this worked. I can just take all of this. I just want to add a few more to it because I sort of like the effect. So scrolls. Whoop. As I'm scrolling, that locks in place, pushes, pushes, pushes. And again, you could have different images. It doesn't always have to be here. This one could be on that side. They could be going back and forth, different stuff. You can, um, you could be, you know, changing the layout per each card, but it should still work in the same way. So I think that's a nice, fun, cool effect. And I hope you agree. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's just go back to the chat quickly. Um, Uh, Chris, you've been using the grid for three years. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> that's really impressive. Um, 
I'm just curious how you were implementing it three years ago with like the limited browser support. Were you having how much like backwards compatibility and stuff were you having to worry about? And I'm guessing you, I'm, I'd be curious about what you think of it now compared to the early implementations of it because it has changed a lot. Alexandra in, um, yeah, the double underscore thing is just um, part of the BEM naming convention. So it's to say that this is, um, my, my whole component is my, my card. So I thought, let me just get one of these on screen. So I have my whole card right there. So that's my main component. And then the images section would be like a sub component. My body would be another sub component. Um, so it's the parts of it. You'll also see things like uh, if you look into the card, say accent or something. So the double underscore means it's a part of the card. And if it's a double hyphen, it would mean that it's uh, a modifier of the card. You wouldn't necessarily see that with a card, but you'll see it with a button. So you'd have like your button and then a button large. It would be like button space, button hyphen hyphen large because you're modifying the original button. Um, whereas the double underscore is for um, parts of that component. And then um, the reason I like using it with SAS is because then I can use the ampersand. So for those who missed it a bit earlier, the ampersand is replacing the word card there. So it's taking whatever it's nested inside of. So then I can just do double underscore body. If I had an accent, I could do ampersand uh, accent and then style the accent one and then anything um, I need you just you know it's all anything that's a, a modifier or a subcomponent. Um, you're just putting the amp ampersand, and when that comes through and it compiles the CSS, it spits it out the way you'd sort of write it if you were writing the CSS. It doesn't nest anything or do anything weird uh, along the way. I hope that clears up a little bit right there. Okay, um, so that was fun. Okay, so yeah, I think I convinced myself that this works. I'm really happy that I can get that to work. So that's cool. Um, so now I'm going to jump over to the CodePen challenge and take a look at this week's because it's I haven't been doing any of the challenges. Um, I've been curious about them. But um, this week's is involving typesetting a blog post. And typesetting is something for me that I love. <laughs> I like doing that type of stuff because I come from a print background and mostly doing page layout and a big part of that is typography. So the idea of this made me happy and then I clicked on it to see what they give you with and they just give you this. This is in Markdown so let's just go look at the compiled uh, HTML. There's no classes on anything so it's just h1 paragraph h2 da 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 da. Um, so there's obviously a different ways to approach something like this, but I saw it and said this is ideal for using a grid and laying things out on the grid, and I'm going to try and do a few fun things um, with it, even though I'm not sure. I don't have a layout in mind exactly. I'm going to have the title as something big at the top. After that, I'm not sure. <laughs> so um, it's a little bit of designing on the fly here. Uh, and I'm also going to obviously be spending a little bit of time on the typography, um, layout decisions and typography in general on this, using grid and up might end up with some flexbox in here. I said I probably have some flexbox, but now that I look at this, flexbox works better when there's lots of children elements. And in this case, there's I have my list items, but there's not a lot of child elements along the way. But I'll see if I can mix them up or maybe make comparisons at least between grid and uh, flexbox, maybe, uh, if I think the right thing comes along. Um, and I've had a few questions about JavaScript, so maybe we could throw something in here. I'm not sure what yet, but if anybody has any ideas of something I could do with this, you know, I, I could add an event listener on something just for the fun of it if we have time. I'll probably be here for another hour and a half-ish, and then I'd need to go to get some lunch. Matthew Butternick's Practical Typography. Is that the one I think it is? Thanks for sharing that, by the way, John. So just in case anyone missed his comment, this is... Yes, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome resource. Um, it's a really nice resource. So if you're not comfortable with type in general, 
Um, it's a really, it's a nice one. It's all online. It's a book, but it's all on. But if you appreciate it, you can pay for it. Um, it goes into the very basics of typography and just setting good type. And there's lots of good stuff in here. And it applies to the web as much as anything else. Like it, he does a really nice job in talking about lots of different things and how to use things and font recommendations and page layout. Uh, parts of it are for, definitely for print and stuff, but he, I'm pretty sure, um, you know, grid, um, anyway, you know, business cards, resumes, but there are some website stuff. And I'm pretty sure along the way he talks about web stuff as well. Um, but it's the theory behind typesetting. So it applies whether it's for web or for um, or for print. It's a good resource and it's free. So that's always nice. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, once again, uh, before, star, after, um, just to show a uh, color pink. It's just going to change the text, everything to pink. I have my lists, I have my H's, I have my paragraphs, everything just becomes pink. So it's selecting everything. And we'll switch the box. Sizing, border, box. Paris, thank you. <laughs> uh, have a sorry, have a good afternoon or evening or wherever you are and uh, thank you for saying I'm a good teacher I appreciate it <laughs> um, position attachment position attachment position attachment I know background attachment position attachment I'll look at that in a second Amir, it's 8.30 p.m. there. It's almost 12 o'clock here. I'm 11.50 right now in the morning. Abhinav. Sorry for saying your name wrong. Um, we can use Flexbox and Justify Content Space Between for the nav bar instead of doing float right and left, which I did in my previous videos. You're 100% right. Um, in my first few videos, I was using floats for everything because that's what I was doing. But um, I have a newer video using Grid and Flexbox uh, to do a navigation. I think, yeah, I do. Um, and I making it responsive and everything. So you can always check that out if you want. Um, the border box. Let's get an example here of what border box does. Um, paragraph width 50, or let's do 500 pixels, background pink. This is why I like live videos, because I can stop and focus on things that people aren't too familiar with. Um, so I'm going to turn the border box thing off for a second. So all my paragraphs here have a width of 500 pixels. They're locked in. That's 500 pixels. It's 500 pixels. Um, if I come on this and I do padding of and just pay attention to like where this is I guess um, so if I do padding and I make it pretty big let's just make it like 200 pixels it's taking my width whoops um, it's well you don't have to pay attention I have 200 pixels then I have 500 pixels then I have 200 pixels and if obviously you're not always gonna be setting widths and pixels you might be doing percentages whatever it is it's still going to do this it's gonna add the padding to the total size it's how the box model works this changes how the box model calculates width and it makes it so it includes the padding and borders inside of the sizing of the box. So it's taking the border box and the padding box and including those in the width of 500. So if you say width 50%, add 20 pixels of padding or 2M of padding, it's still 50% and it's pushing things in instead of adding that extra stuff to the outside. So it just makes calculating stuff a million times easier. So that's why I do it on every single project I do. Even just simple things. Anything I'm working on that's like an automatic right, right away, um, every single time. So, uh, like before, one thing, um, if you do read the practical typography thing, one of the worst mistakes you can make in type is this. Having text that goes from one side of the screen to the other. It's terrible. You can't read it. People, you get lost. You have, I have to move. I literally would have to move my head to read that comfortably and then move my head back. Like, that's not what you want. Um, so 
ideally you want to you want to limit the width of things so obviously I could just say my paragraphs are a certain size and try and limit it that way um, but I'm gonna and um, one of the part of this challenge is not adding or not changing the markup so definitely body display grid lets me control exactly what I want and just to make things more interesting let's not do a simple grid let's make a more complicated grid and see if we can play around with it a little bit Even, yeah, that's background attachment fixed, I know of. Um, it's a little bit different from position sticky, though. As I'm guessing you know. Um, no problem on the explanation. All right, so grid, and let's do our grid. Um, grid, auto flow. I wish I could explain auto flow better, but I'll look at it in a second with you guys. Um, auto flow over... Ooh, I'm going to do the same thing as before, min max of 1m, comma, 1fr. So that's sort of my container. That will act as a space for my container. Um, I'm just going to do a 1,000 pixels for now, and then this, but that's going to change. Or actually, let's make this responsive, and we're going to do mobile first. So at the small screen sizes, how do we want this to work? At the small screen sizes, I want... Just one. Uh, I'm trying to think if I should do a min max on this. I could just do auto even, and it's just going to fill that space up. I think for mobile sizes, that's fine. Um, so display grid, yep, that's what I'm looking at in this video. So display grid is setting up uh, the grid. It's making it so I can use the, um, the new CSS grid. And then this is can setting up my grid. So uh, if you're not using Firefox for development purposes, if you're going to use CSS Grid, use Firefox, because in the inspect, uh, the inspector here in the dev tools, we can turn our grid on and we can actually physically see the grid, which is really, really nice. Um, now, obviously, the problem is everything's in the wrong spot and it looks like crap. So basically, I now need to place things on my grid. So let's go with my H1 first. My H1, I'm going to give this like a background of black, color white. We'll probably change the colors and make this look pretty. And uh, grid columns. So I want this to start all the way at the left side of the page and go all the way to the right side. So starts at line one. You can see the, the number there. I want to go from one. I could either do over four because that's how many I have. Um, the thing is, I'm going to be changing this grid at different screen sizes grid column, not columns. So I'm going to do 1 over negative 1. So that means 1, negative 1, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I have negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. So the negatives just go backwards on the numbering system. So my title goes all the way across the top. I'm not used to code pen needing to do this. Body, uh, body, margin, 0. Usually that's included in code pen. Don't know what's up with that. Okay, so there we go. My title's going all the way across the top. Uh, margin of zero, padding, and let's give it like 20 VH. I want it to be pretty big. 20 VH and, zzz, I don't know, 2M, something like that on the left and the right. Or right, just do a text align center. Text align center. And the font size. I'm going to come back and sort of typeset it a little bit after. I just want to do the layout. I want this to be pretty big. The name, actually my font's going to get a lot bigger, so that's going to take up a lot of the screen. Um, pretty much everything else. Is there an easy way to actually know what I'm going to do here? Let's just say everything inside my body. Is there a reason to do that? No. Because everything is inside my body. Uh, grid, column, 2 over negative 2, just for now. That's going to change a bit. I just want to be able to see my content. There we go. Much, much, much better. Um, so one thing that's interesting with the grid, um, because everything is a... My grid is the, the body. Everything here is becoming um, a child of the grid. And everything's creating its own row. So you can see if I go all the way along, um, I'm getting my own row for everything here. So 
getting lots and lots of rows. These are part of the implicit grid. The explicit grid is the ones that I've created. So the only thing I've created is my columns. I haven't created any rows. They're automatically being created. Um, Dario, do I have any video ideas for celebrating 20k subs? I have none. So if you have an idea, I'd love to hear it. <laughs> I've been thinking about it for a while and I literally have no idea what to do. So I'd gladly take suggestions if anybody has any. <laughs> Um, okay, so actually, at small screen sizes, this isn't terrible, right? Oh, my image is way too big. Uh, do, 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 and just do my image up here. Image max width 100%. You can add the height auto on there too, if you want to be careful. And should we? Yeah, why not? I always like doing this. Um, and maybe we'll do some more interesting things. Uh, so height, let's give it a max height too. Max height, just to make it a bit more interesting. <laughs> Should I bother? Because I, I want to use object fit, and I don't know if object fit's going to work right now. Object fit, I don't think it'll do anything. Cover. Um, max width 100%. Max height, let's just do like 30 viewport height. Really? Or what if I just do width 100% then? Yeah, there we go. Um, so if you don't know about object fit, I have talked about it in a few videos, but just really quickly, it makes an image behave like background size cover. It's effectively the same, just browser support is questionable. So you can see it's a regular image, but I've told the width it's always 100%. So it, instead of stretching it though, um, the object fit cover clips it instead. So it's clipping the image as my screen is getting bigger or smaller instead of stretching it, which is nice and handy. Um, margin negative eight pixels also makes the nav menu at the top without removing body margins. Yeah, that would work. Um, I tend just to do the margin zero because I want to control my margins everywhere. Um, but technically that would work. I'm pretty sure every single browser has an 8 pixel as the user agent style, but I guess if some for some reason one didn't, that could cause an issue. I'm not really sure though. A quick tour of the the <laughs> the only thing that really matters uh, right now is just if you if you do open it up, the dev tools are really really similar, so you get it um, you get the rules, the layout, all that. And even if you come to layout here. So rules, layout, under layout, you can turn your grid on and off which is super handy. This is why you should be using uh, Firefox. I'm also using Firefox nightly, which means it's updated all the time. I updated it yesterday. It needs an update today. It takes five seconds, so it's not a big deal, um, but you'll have more um, stuff pretty much. Um, you can also control. So do I want the line numbers on or off? Yes or no. I like leaving them on a lot because it makes it easier. Um, if you have areas, I haven't made any grid areas, but if you made grid areas, you can have it display the area names as well. And um, you can extend lines infinitely if you want, um, which we can't see right now, but maybe if something comes up, I could take a look at that. Um, you get your box model and everything. If you click this little thingy here, you can also get the animations tab is also really handy, but I don't have any animations right now. Um, the fonts one is the best because it tells you exactly what fonts are being used. So that's great. It's a nice way to find out what fonts some other website might be using. Um, if I come back to this, it sort of bangs out. It takes the rules thing and it puts the rules here and it leaves the other ones. So if your screen's big enough, you can have your rules always showing here and then you can have your layout here at the same time. Um, that's the only real difference there. It just sort of separates the two, which is nice because then you can have this on and see your rules on the side here. Um, oh, sorry, just got a few things popping up in the chat. Riku Grid, um, Chrome does have a grid inspector, it's just not very good. And it's, from what I understand, Jen Simmons, who's works at uh, Mozilla now, she's employed by Mozilla, she gets feedback and she works with grid extensively. They've hired her as sort of a grid ambassador and she does a lot of work in making sure that it's working well, but she deals directly with the development team behind it and gives them suggestions on stuff to add to the dev, the dev tools. So that's why their dev tools are amazing, pretty much, is they have someone who's actually suggesting all of it. 
I'm assuming Chrome's going to copy them at one point or another, but um, it's for now, Firefox is way, way, way ahead. Um, hi, Karen. Nice to see you in here. Um, I'd, a 3D view. Do you have any suggestions on exactly what you want? Foya, is object fits support at 90% now? That's not too bad. The only problem is if it's not supported, you'd get this nasty stretched image, which sort of sucks. <laughs> Um, okay, so at small screen sizes, like if we're on a mobile device, let's get some typography looking good here. Um, I'm going to use CSS variables. I wasn't planning on doing this, but we might as well, because why not? And it works really well with um, typesetting. We need to go find some fonts to work with. Um, I'm going to go with, just because of the image that's like a flowery image, I'm picturing this as something a little more delicate. So I am going to take a serif font for my headings and I'm going to have them as pretty big. Mm, I like, in general, when I'm picking stuff, I try to get things that have more than one style. I, I use Meriwether all the time, so I'm going to choose something else. Um, Crimson text I've used a lot. I also like it. Especially for titles, because here if we look at the like the bold, um, I like this. I don't know. I like what it looks like. Baskerville is a nice font. Let's go with Baskerville because I have a bold in there. I didn't know they had a Libri Baskerville. That's cool. Do do do. No, I still. Um, Crimson text is a nice font for me. I don't know. I have a thing that I like about it. Uh, ten styles. There's an extra bold. Let's see what this looks like, just really quick. I'm going with Basque, uh, Garamond here. Cool. Add specimen. Um, whoops, that's not what I wanted to click on, but that's okay. For now, let's go find what my other font's going to be, too. There's lots of fonts, uh, lots of websites that help you pick fonts, too, that do like font combinations. Um, Right now, I'm just playing around, so I'm just going to search for something that looks like it should be nice. I'm not going to spend as much time on it. Um, I do want to consider how it's going to work with Garamond as like the combination of the two, but I'm going to go with something that's kind of neutral. Um, doo -doo -doo. If anyone has any suggestions, I might just go with work saws. I sort of like it these days. Mm. Oh, I'm going to go with open sounds for now just because I trust it and I might go with something else after. Okay. Um, yeah, Riku. Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Rik Rikyu. Rikyu 1978. I guess I should say the whole thing instead of just focusing on the be beginning. I'm guessing it's Ricky. Um, yeah, me, CSS Grid can really help reduce on the amount of uh, media queries you need. So hopefully we can see that a little bit here. Uh, customize. I'm going to go just with open size light and bold. And extra bold. Italic. I'm going to stick with those now. We can always add some extra ones after. Copy you. Is it here? Here? Here. Uh, so let's go and bring this in. Um, just set some of this stuff up quickly. I'm just going to do all my h1, h2. This might change, but and block quote will all be um, the Garamond one. And the body will have um, font family. I took open sans, right? Open sans. Did I take open sans? I did. Okay, good. Open sans. Sans serif. This probably should be also uh, the scripty one, but yeah. Um, so right away on my body, I mentioned in the first part of this video that the line height, line height should be higher. I'm gonna go with like a 1.4 for mobile, maybe. I want more space, no, even more than that, 1.6. 
Um, you want space between your lines. It just makes it a lot more readable. Um, I could even go bigger than that. I'm, I tend to overdo it though, so maybe don't take my advice. I like a lot of line spacing. You also want to think of the relationship. I'm going to turn off my grid for a second. Um, of the space, like your margins and stuff, as your margins get bigger and as your white space gets bigger, sometimes you can increase your uh, line height as well um, as you're going. Um, okay, so that looks okay. I'm going to make the font size a little bit bigger. Font size 1.1 rem. I tend to go with larger font sizes too. I don't know why. I just... Maybe I overdo it a little bit, but um, that looks okay. That's not too bad. Okay. Um, you can also think of it, your body controls a lot uh, when it comes to everything. And actually, my font size shouldn't be there. Font. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back up and fix my font sizes in a second. Uh, or actually, let's do it here. Should we? Um, base, uh, font size, body will be, I think I did 1.1 RAM, right? So this is where, um, if you haven't used uh, CSS custom properties or variables, the real name is custom properties, but everybody calls them variables and they put var here, so it sort of makes it look like a variable. Um, var is, what was it again, body? Uh, font, font size, font size, body. Um, it has the advantage of uh, we can include them in media queries. So you're gonna see it's really, really cool what we can do with that uh, when I get there. <laughs> Comic sounds. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion, Dario. Montserrat is a very nice font. Roboto I also use a lot, yeah. They're all, they're good fonts. Other than Comic Sans. <laughs> as, a, as a print designer that... Uh, <laughs> actually, my wife's an elementary school teacher. And so she uses Comic Sans a lot, and I'm just like, oh, there's other, there's others. You can choose something else if you want. You're allowed. Um, font size H1. So my H1 font size viewport uh, will be a calc of viewport width. Uh, viewport width. Um, let's say like five viewport width. Let's just see what that looks like. Oh, I need to actually set that somewhere. H1. Font size var. I hate writing these out though. Var uh, font size h1. That's tiny. That's not what I was after. Um, but that's okay. Let's try 15 then. But I don't want to overdo it either. Hmm. That's not working. Did I put the wrong thing? Or did I do something wrong? Font size. If anybody in the chat sees what I'm doing wrong, let me know. H1, font size. Oh, I put font weight. Success. There we go. That would also be why the five was so small. I was like, that doesn't make sense. Um. Let's try 10 then. I, I'm still not used to setting it like this. Uh, in general with large fonts, sorry I'm jumping up and down a lot right now. Um, in general with large font sizes, font, uh, what am I doing? Line height should be a lot smaller. The bigger your font, the tighter uh, your line height needs to be. Because um, you can see here even as this is getting bigger with my screen, the space between them is getting bigger. Um, there we go. So actually, it's not terrible. I don't want it to get like infinitely large on massive screens. Uh, but I do want it a little bit bigger than that. So what I'm actually going to do here is, in a nice way, this is like sort of extreme. So this is why I use the calc, because I can do something like, uh, so say I do 2 rem. That's going to be two, well, 2 rem plus 5 viewport width. So a nice thing about calc is that it can mix units together, which is super, super handy. So now as this gets bigger, it's growing in size, but it's not growing at such a ridiculous pace. And as it's shrinking, it's you know not shrinking at such a ridiculous pace either. Um, and I'm getting down to a small enough size. I'm wondering what that would look like. I should have a little bit of padding on that, but I'm wondering what that would look like if it was italic. I don't know if I took the italic. Did I take italic? 
400, uh, 800i. Do, do, do. Let's see what that will look like. Uh, font style. Italic. Uh, do, 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 do. Not too sure. What if I did font weight 400? Uh, text transform upper case. Did I not take the regular 400? 400. Aha, I think this is what I'm going to go with. Um, now, if you go all caps, you can also reduce your line height. So I think I'm going to drop that down to just, whoops, one. Um, and if you go all caps, it can be a little bit harder to read. Uh, and with with um, serif fonts, I don't often go all caps, but then I can do letter spacing, which will make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, I don't know, 10 pixels, way too much. And this just becomes a guessing game at finding something I like. It's gonna get too big at big screens, but I think at small screens, it's not too bad, except it's not, it's a bit too big. I want it to fit. I don't even know how big that really is, but I want it to say fit in this space here. And again, I'm focusing on uh, maybe I can make this bigger, like seven. Playing around a little bit here. That's not too bad. That's pretty good. Maybe I could do something with the smaller, smaller size, but for now, that's not too bad. Um, so the tremendous post title, I think I'm happy with that. Um, so calc, Amir Calc just lets me do calculations, including mixing units together. So it's just adding six viewport width plus one rem, and it does it on the fly. So as it's because it's calc and because it's viewport widths, the viewport widths are getting calculated automatically as I change my viewport width, and it's going to add one rem to that total size. So it just makes it a little bit bigger because if that was zero, you see like zero plus six. What if I just did six viewport width? So that's six viewport width, and then one M plus six viewport width just makes it that touch bigger. So this sort of gives it a baseline to be at. So you can doesn't have to be as extreme as using just viewports. Um, yeah, let's just keep going. Sorry, got a little distracted there. If anybody has any questions along the way, please don't be shy. Ask away. If you want me to try something different, let me know. Ask me to try something. I'm uh, completely up to trying out different stuff here. Okay, so that works. I'm going to do something more interesting with this, but let's just say, let's just, actually, one other thing. Um, the collapsing margins don't collapse anymore. So do, do, do. Let's just put everything. H1, H2, H3. I don't know if there's an H4 block, quote, paragraph, um, margin, top, zero. I probably should have just done a universal selector, but whatever. I want to take all the margin tops off so I can control the margins on everything. Um, my H1 is okay. My H2, that's an H2, and then this is an H3, I think. Let's just do uh, H2, H3, margin top of 3M to space things out a little more. And margin bottom 0.5M. That's too much. 1.5. Um, in general, you want subtitles to be closer to the text they're following than the text that was before it. So the whole like even spacing thing, I don't like that. This space should be bigger than this space because this text is related to this and it's not related to that. <laughs> CSS4. <laughs> Hi, Protoscribe. Um, oh, the hyphen hyphen. I was a bit confused. Uh, these ones, this is setting up variables. So these are. Um, CSS custom properties or variables. So I can use this here and then I can come in and use it in 
it's in my body 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 right here I can write out var and then put that in there and it's going to take this number and plug it into there um, there's a reason I'm putting these all in here and you're going to see it once I start getting the larger um, the larger sizes here so h1 I also need a margin 0 0 I'm, let's just put 1m here because it drives me nuts when it touches the sides it screws everything up again though <laughs> okay, I'll leave that at 0 for the moment um, margin, or 1M is really big there, but 0, 0, I need margin on the bottom. I should probably come up with like a spacer unit. Um, but, and then I could use that too. Should I do that? No, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Uh, okay, that's my space there. What's this? This is just a paragraph. So that's just a paragraph. Then I have an h2 and then a, oh my image is in a paragraph that screws me up <laughs> why is my image in a paragraph just for layout purposes that's kind of annoying oh, I'm glad I got your name right protoscribe um, yeah I don't go live very often and you're yeah, I don't go live very often, sadly, so I'm glad you could make it for this one. Um, okay. Hmm. Why did they... I, mean, I get why they put the image in a paragraph, but <laughs> when you don't have classes on anything and part of the challenge is not to uh, edit anything up in here, it does make it a little bit harder to play around with, but that's okay. This I want... So that's hue. So I, what we're going to have to do here, guys, is use some um, P... Uh, first of type uh, font style uh, font family is my Garamond one which is on my where's the Garamond one I'm gonna make a variable for this um, font family serif and font family sa Serif, just to make my life a little bit easier. And even, I'm lazy, so I usually do it like this. Serif and sans serif. And obviously there's better ways of doing that, but... Um, sans serif is my open sans, and my serif is you. So this can get changed to var font family serif. And if I just come up here and paste that in... Oh no, I took the wrong one. What was it? EV Gara Gara Mond. There we go, it's working. Good. Um, so now I don't have to remember that whole thing. I can use that again here. Var font family serif. So if you've never used those before, hopefully you understand how it's working now. <laughs> don't let me distract you too much, uh, protoscribe. <laughs> I don't want to distract you from your work. Um, okay, so we have that there. That looks a little bit better like that. I'm also going to say that um, my... I won't use sass here. Let's just do this whole thing. Um, first of type... M is display block, just because I want these to be on separate lines. Do I? I did. Yeah. They're so far away from here. I need to do something interesting with that. I'm going to come back to this after. I'm not sure what to do with it. Uh, the subtitle needs to be bigger. H2. And then again, I'm worried about mobile sizes right now, so I'm not worried too much about layout stuff, but still that small font. And I should be doing this up here. And again, once I very shortly font size H2. We'll do a calc again, uh, 1m plus 4 viewport width, let's see what that looks like, just a little bit smaller. So again, that should help it, isn't that an h2, an inspiring subtitle? Oh, I'm not you. I have to use it once I put it. So 
So again, it's going to get bigger and smaller. I don't know if I need to bother that doing that for my H2 there, but I like playing with that stuff. Um, and last but not least, because I think there's no nothing else after this, font size, font size H3. And let's just say that it's uh, calc. No, I don't need calc. Let's just say it's like 2.2 rems. I want to, yeah, I'm just basing it on my body there, making it's probably too big actually. Uh, H3 font size font size H3 uh, do I have something for all of these things? that's from H1 H2, H3 line height one, I'll go with 1.1 1 .1. that's too big Uh, let's go with like a 1.5. Okay. Uh, I'm not styling that right now. <laughs> That's pretty good just to start with. Really, really basic. Just setting up my typography. Um, so now the whole reason I put this in the root here is because now when I get to a larger screen size, I want some of these to change a little bit. So I don't want my title to get insanely big because right now it's getting way, way, way too big. Um, and I want to I want to build in a media query that's going to change some of this But it's nice being able to control all your font sizes inside of one place. So I can do at media um, Screen and min width of I don't know I'm just gonna do 800 for now, but we can play around with that number and then I can come in here and do my root once again and We can change all of these sizes so I don't have to go in my code, I don't have to find what all my other things were, I don't have to do h1, h2, h3, I just have to change all of these in one spot right here and it's going to affect everything everywhere. So um, that's nice and handy. So the biggest this should get, so the, now it's sort of, I'm going to cap the size of it. So this will be something like 7 rem. And I'm, I'm purely guessing at the moment. It's nice to come up with like a type scale and stuff, it's a little bit big. Um, but for this I just so you can see that here it's getting bigger 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 I get to 800 pixels you can see it sort of jumps there it gets a bit bigger at 800 I'm guessing that was 800 and then it locks in and it's never getting bigger than that so do 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 and then it's locked in at that size and then we can go and look at our other ones that's not bothering me I might not change that one because I like this is like oh that's the title of the post though I guess right and this is the subtitle this is gonna have to move I almost want that to be like up in here and really small we're gonna see how I'm how I can do that. Um, so this one can change and lock in. Whoops. In general, your relationship, the fonts at small screen sizes should be like slightly bigger, and then at bigger screen sizes, you can have larger differences in your font sizes. As a general, not like a hard and fast rule. But let's say that. So if that's six, I'm gonna go with like a four point five. This one's gonna go up to like a two, and this might go up to like a one point two. Just want to look quickly. I'm pretty happy with that relationship of the font sizes here. So I'm going to leave that like that. I'm going to leave that like that for now. Now the biggest issue is my grid. And I want to play around with my grid a bit. As I mentioned at the very beginning of this, we don't want lines that are super long like this. Having long lines like that just makes it really hard to read. Uh, the variables I'm using now are CSS variables. They're not SAS variables. So you can use, if you're writing it, the SAS variable would be writing it like this. Uh, oops. Uh, font, family, serif, and then whatever. This, if you see something like that with the dollar sign, that would be a SAS variable. But in this case, um, you can see here, I'm not using any SAS. I can't even compile this down. This is straight up regular CSS. Again, it's again, browser support is your biggest issue. Oops, I missed a bunch of comments. So just give me one second. I have to scroll up a bit. I missed a lot of stuff. You guys have been busy all of a sudden. Um, Abhinav is asking, Hi Kevin, is it possible we make Hero to fit the full viewport? And use swipe to get all the other sections for small. Yes, we can. I could look at doing that. Um, 
Yeah, the date line needs to be fixed. This is disastrous right now. Um, part of that is... I'm not sure actually why the, this space here I created and I made it too big. I'm not sure what's creating this space right now. It must be coming from this, but I thought I turned off margin tops. Did I turn off margin bottoms instead of margin tops? I'm gonna have to look. Um, <laughs> Husky, the date line is bothering you because it looks like crap right now. That's why. <laughs> I'm gonna fix it, don't worry. Protoscribe, will there be ever a website like Alex Garrett of Code Course where it is a subscription service for lessons? Uh, it would be nice to have one for front end. I'm not actually familiar with what he offers. So is it like one-on-one -on -one lessons or is it just like um, things? Because I am working on a course. Um, but it's like a one-off buy. It's not a subscription. Um, if I had a lot of courses, maybe at one point I would make it a subscription model because I think people like that if there's a lot available. But the, right now there'll be one available. So... Um, I'm making a one-time purchase once it does come out. Um, I don't think it's in the description of this video, but in the description of some other videos, you can find a link for that or on my website if you're curious. Anurag, thanks for joining us. And yeah, take it easy. Have a good night. Um, an inspiring subtitle. Okay, so what I now we have to get back into my grid. So I did 800 pixels, which I can't figure out where that is. There's 800 pixels. So is it okay there? That's not terrible. I'm going to live with... Ooh, that's kind of not nice. I feel like there should be something else in between. That's and It could be boring just because it's a wall of text too. Not this, the most inviting thing to read. So I definitely feel like I need to modify things a little bit. Maybe change the font, to be fair. Um, maybe just not go with the light. Maybe go with the 400 instead. I'm not sure maybe make it a bit bigger but we'll stick with our media query that we have here already um, I'm gonna play with this quote a lot too this one needs to be I want to make that a lot nicer and yes I'm gonna fix this um so time is it hmm it was only go half an hour more this might go a bit longer than planned guys but I do need to get lunch at one point uh, maximum one hour 30 minutes one hour at the most more CSS variable support, um, thanks, incorrect. He's saying that it's currently about 88%. That's not too bad. I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> it depends on the project again. Uh, personal projects, it is perfectly fine. And you can also, it's an easy one to fall back for because you can set up like your basic styles and that's just what it's going to work for for everybody. So like this, you could have there, but you could have it also as just your generic styles. And then at other media queries and different stuff where it gets fancier for that last 12%. It doesn't. It's always an option. Paul, I won't be coming back after lunch. I have other stuff that I need to do. But um, yeah, I won't be coming back after lunch. But 30 minutes, one hour or more, maybe an hour. It's 12.30. Yeah, I could go until 1.30 maybe, but I'm already getting hungry. <laughs> I'm used to eating lunch really early because of my work schedule. Um, but I'm having fun with this and I want to finish this. Whenever I finish this, it's when it ends. But I can't do more of it. Whenever I finish this or an hour, we'll see what comes first. Um, so yeah, we want to get the grid to be more interesting now. So I'm going to come down to here. At media. Screen. I don't really need the screen in here, but whatever. Min. Uh, and min width. 800 pixels. And my grid is going to change a little bit. So grid, which also means a lot of stuff needs uh, my grid, my body. Grid. Um, actually, I'm going to take this media query at the bottom so I can just throw everything in there. I also didn't get any water. I should get some water. Grid. Um, what's my grid going to become? So I'm going to keep the same. Let's just take what I had before. Where was it? There it is copy you, paste that in, and now let's modify it. So here it's going to get more interesting in the middle, pretty much. Uh, let's put this on its own line so I can make this a little bit smaller. Um, so here I actually want to break this up into a few pieces, I think, and I can. I think with that I can actually do something with you too. I can take this and like shove it on the side. So. I'm going to put two extra columns in here. So I just have to think about how I'm going to space these out. So I'm going to use 
I think I'm going to have one. What if I do an auto and I add in a min max? And this is where the line length and everything comes in. So my font deals with the font size. I'm not about to start doing calculations and stuff. I just, I'm going to eyeball it. Uh, the minimum size, I'm at 800 pixels now. So I just have to think eight. So let's just say I do 500 as my minimum and a maximum of, I'll start with 900 and we'll see that's going to be too big because already this is a bit big. So maybe my minimum can even be smaller than that. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. And then before I just had everything. So now I'm gonna change everything. Oh, this is gonna screw stuff up though. Okay, let's not change everything there. I'm gonna say my H2, my H3, my paragraphs. Ah, I'm gonna, I actually wanna add another space here too, I think. Let's just see what happens if I do one FR, one FR. I'm curious. So already that made it a little smaller, which is fine. Paragraph. Uh, what else do I have? A no, I don't want to do my block quote. That's why I was thinking of this. Let's just see. What I'm going to start with this. Um, grid column two over negative two question mark. Yes. Yes. See, I don't have enough room on the sides, though. And that's getting too big because let me turn on my grid line numbers because I'm putting it on the wrong lines here. Three. I want line three, not two. Three over negative three. All right, so that's going to be better, but it's not going to give me enough room for what I want to do here because what I want to do is take this out of here and I want to put that into there. Um, and let's just see, that I, this is the maximum size I can get to right now. Let's see my block quotes going all the way. I'm going to play with that a little bit. Um, I actually sort of like that width. I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, I need to do my uh, OL, EL. There we go. Okay, I sort of like that as a maximum width, so I think I'm going to leave that like that. And then... Um, John, I live stream once every two months, maybe. I'm going to get another one in maybe in two weeks time though. And then I'm, I always, whenever I do these, I say I'm going to live stream a little more, but I never end up doing it, <laughs> but I really enjoy doing it. So I, but I just, I don't know how long it's, I, I can't tell you. Um, so let's turn my line numbers on again because I need them to figure out how I'm going to do this, but these numbers are also going to change, I think. So this is my p nth of type 1. I want my first. Can I just do first of type? I can't, but whatever. Um, then again, this is because I'm not giving them classes because I don't want to play around. If I had a class on this, I, I would just target it by the class grid column oh I have to put this after I'm gonna because I don't think that adds specificity does it I'm not sure but I'm gonna put it here grid column two over just two there we go I want to squeeze that in there but is that gonna screw up its small sizes uh, uh, sort of line height of one point three text align right and I'm going to come back up here to my grid and grid gap 1m just to give me the space there I don't really want one there though hmm should I do a grid gap now or should I just use them see because this is going to give me lots of extra gaps everywhere that I'm not sure if I want. Oh, the FR is going to work, though, because the way FR, it's nice. The FR will work there, and this one collapsed. Actually, you know what? That's also going to help me keep 
a bit of balance on it. So I think I'll keep that grid gap. So if I turn this off, just see what it looks like. Now, obviously, I don't want this floating up here. I actually want it down with this. So I can do that. Let's turn this back on because I need the numbers. I just wonder if, if I move. Oh, I do have a margin top on this, don't I? My H2, didn't I turn margin tops off? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I did that from H. I did that because I wanted this space to be bigger, but that's my H3. I don't need that on my H2. But I want this and I want this. It's not the best way to do it, but margin top of zero. Oh, there we go. Just got a little cramp in my leg there. That was weird. Um, the other thing is now this is causing the big space here that I don't necessarily want, I think. Or is that from a bit of margin, actually? That's actually from the margin. I, I, okay, so it's not doing it. But technically, that's just, I'm not going to change it. But um, if this was really, actually, let's just change it so I can show you what I mean. Um, if this was a lot longer. They didn't like that I did that. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. There we go. So if it's a lot longer, it's going to push everything down because these are sharing. Like this is in the same. This row has gotten longer now. So the next thing, which is starting in the next row, is just getting pushed down because that row is getting taller and taller and taller. So the other thing I can do is on this, um, the grid column is two. My grid row, I think I can just write span two. I don't think I have to write, yeah. So I can just span two, so it's gonna keep going. I can do span three, span four. I can have that like go all the way down the side if I wanted to. So by doing that, now th the only thing that's creating this space under here is the margin that's on this. It has enough, this won't control anything extra. So now I have to get rid of all my gibberish. It felt like I was about to crash there when that happened, so I'm happy I didn't. Um, we'll go back to my compiled HTML. The alignment is kind of weird, but part of that is um, just, you can see like they're technically aligned with each other. Um, it's just the way the letters are in this one, the larger font sizes, which is kind of annoying. I'm wondering if I should start that actually. Uh, grid row three over span two. Yeah, start it there. I don't know. Does that make sense? It's kind of weird in a way. And this space is way too big. Uh, H1 margin bottom 0.5 M. I don't remember how big I had it. That's better. Uh, now with this, it's a pull quote. We want my pull quotes to stand out. So again, um, that's my well, block quote, pull quote, block quote, um, block quote. You know, we can make the color different too when we're doing this. So let's, but let's just stay here. Um, Dexter, what would you rotate? Oh, you'd rotate this to be like sideways. We can use word. <laughs> I just sent an email about it not long ago. Um, actually, I'm going to change a little bit in here too. Ideally, like right now, that all looks the same, which is driving me nuts. Um, they're using a strong for the whole thing, though, which is like, okay. Um, where did I set that all up? P first of type, display block. So M, my M is that. So what if I just here did like a font size of 0.9, just to make it a bit smaller. Um, then... The M is the beginning part, so the color color could be gray. And then here, this color could be black. Just to sort of make a bigger difference than it just being italic. So they sort of stand out a little more than how it was standing out before. I could even like do an align self bottom so it lines up with the bottom of the image maybe. That could maybe, I don't know. An inspiring subtitle, we get to that. This, doo -doo -doo, where we were, block quote. Um, 
if I do margin don't uh, zero, so you gonna screw everything up. Is it in a paragraph? No. Why is there? What is this? Oh, there's a paragraph inside the block quote. That's why. Why is it so small? Oh, it's a first of type. I didn't think of that. Is <laughs> uh, there a first of type? First child wouldn't work because it's also the first child. This is sort of hacky. Block quote. This is where classes really help out, guys. <laughs> this is why you want classes. Um, it's a good a good lesson in why uh, it's good. Why uh, why classes are good to use because then it prevents stupid things like this from happening. Um, I'll look at rotating the the name in a second. I'd have to remember. I'm trying to think of the right um, property to put on it to make it look good. Um, so let's just do a font size. I want it to be quite a bit bigger. That's going to be too big, probably. And text align right. Uh, block quote P. Why don't I just do it like this? That would make sense. Or not. Do I even... Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no. I'm okay. I thought I was doing something silly. That is a block quote P. Why is this not working? Even like I would say, even if if what I did up higher had higher specificity, which I don't think it would, I don't even see. Oh, block quote star is lower than paragraph first of type. First of type, really? Why? Does anyone know why that's this is higher specificity than this? Weird. Okay, I'm going to come back and fix that. If anybody in the comments, I don't want importance on here, but for the moment, um, I'll leave them. If anybody in the, the comments can help me understand why that's happening, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, my block quote, uh, block, I'm going to do another thing here, block quote, um, before, actually block quote first, uh, display relative, block, let's make it so we can actually see more of my CSS here for you guys. And then my block quote before position absolute and I absolute um, content is open quote I believe that's how we do it yeah it worked font size 5m I'm gonna do this in m so it's relative to my block quotes font size um, Top zero. I put display position. That is a top zero. Hmm. Negative point five m. Left of negative point two five m. 
and uh, said index of index of negative one. And let's just do uh, even just do an opacity opacity of like 0 0.2. 0 0.1. That looks nice. I like that. There we go. <laughs> Lunchtime, Paul. <laughs> um, Magdalena, thanks for joining us. If you got to go soon, uh, this I am recording all of this, and it's going to be up on the channel um, when in a couple of days, probably, because it takes a while for YouTube to process it and then for me to remember to publish it. Um, okay, let's go and look to see if I can rotate uh, this, because I don't remember the properties to do it. It's Word... You can just do a, like a... I, we could... Okay, there's a few different ways we could do this, <laughs> except it's going to screw this up. So I need to find another way to select it. Um, because I just don't want it selecting that. How can I have it select this, but not select that? Body. Oh, I could add. It's not ideal, um, but it will work. And it will fix my important things, too. Uh, where was it? First of type. So here I could say body with a direct child who's a parent first of type. So that will only affect this. You can see even the color of here just changed now. So that will work and it will prevent me from selecting anything else at the same time. Cool. I sort of like the gray color that was on there though. We'll come back. Um, so on here, I could just do like a transform, tra uh, rotate 90 digs and I could rotate it and then negative, I guess. Um, use my transform thing and uh, who go? I don't know where it went now. It's gone flying off somewhere. I could definitely do that, um, but there is another way of doing it, and I'm embarrassed that I don't know how. I uh, give it a class. Class would be the smart thing to do, but part of this challenge is not to touch it. Um, it's in Markdown, and part of it is not to come up into the the, the code and actually change anything. So we've got to get creative with my selectors. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Paul, you're right. Ideally, classes would be the best solution here. Um, Janice, sadly, it won't be a regular thing, but it'd be semi-regular whenever I get the chance. I will be doing a live video. Um, so, uh, what's the... I completely forget. Word orientation CSS. I literally sent an email about this like three weeks ago. Text orientation, I guess, is the one I'm looking for. Um, yes, it is. Okay. Now, the problem with text orientation is the, the good ones, the ones we want to use, aren't well supported. <laughs> uh, and we'll look at why. So, if I remember correctly, so it's text orientation. Text or orientation sideways. Of course, it didn't work. I, th I hope I'm on the right one. One second, let's go and look. Usually, there's examples here. Oh, no, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. That's for writing up and down. It's not for turning it. Well, am I thinking of the wrong one? I'm pretty sure there's one that turns it. Oh, it's writing mode, isn't it? Aha, it is writing mode. Okay, I got the wrong one. Um, isn't there a new... Yeah, the sideways one is... Uh, so I knew, I knew the sideways was important. Uh, writing mode. So writing mode... I have to come back to here again. Horizontal, right to left. Horizontal, vertical, right to left. So this was the one that they first came up with. The problem is they turn it the wrong way. Um, so you can see it's like kind of awkward. First of all, I need it to be up there and it's down here now. What if I did left to right? 
no, it's even worse. Okay. Um, but it's, it, I can, I'll fix that in a second, but it's, you know, like it, I'm reading it the wrong way around. No, I do want LR. I'm wrong. We read left to right, not right to left. Um, but you know, nobody, even now it, it's really awkward and nobody actually reads that way. So they added the sideways property. So sideways to fix this because, um, the original ones are terrible as far as I'm concerned. The sideways are the good ones. Sideways make it so it's more how you're used to looking at it. But the sideways, um, so here's all the examples. So sideways actually position the text in a way that you'd normally read it as far as I'm concerned. It's the, um, here are the sideways too. The, it's in the working draft for the sideways stuff, add support. So because it's in the working draft, it has terrible browser support. Luckily, I'm using Firefox right now, so we can actually take a look at it because um, nothing else currently supports it. But since we're in Firefox, let's just see sideways, and it'll be on its way. It's part of the level four stuff, so eventually um, it will be there. But this is more of how you'd actually read something if it were to be sideways. So just to give you an idea of the stuff that's on its way that eventually we'll be able to use. This one, don't use sideways yet. It's just, it has like no browser support. It's also really awkward to select text that's sideways apparently. Um, but that's kind of cool. I like that. It's It definitely takes the emphasis off of it. So I see this a lot less than when I didn't have that. Like when I have it like this, um, it stands out a lot more because my eye sees this, my eye's going to jump to there, my eye's going to sort of, I'm, I'm sort of following that order as I'm reading it. When I put this on, I am i don't really look at it, or I might see like, oh, it's June and come down to here. Like, my eye doesn't stop. It has less visual weight to it because it's sideways, because it's not taking up weight left to right. It's only taking weight up and down, so it, it, there's less visual weight to it. Um, maybe you want it to be less important, and you like that, or maybe you want it to be more important, and you don't like it. Um, but it is cool that we can do that and not have to use rotate because then when you rotate it There's issues with that and positioning it and when you do a transform it also creates a new stacking index So if you're using Z indexes a lot, it can also it can potentially cause issues with that And I do have a video on that coming out uh, in a little bit, which is why I'm mentioning it So yeah, I hope you like that little trick. Um, I'm gonna I, I'm, I like this better for what I'm doing, but I definitely think this has um, its place. You can place each letter by adding returns. <laughs> you could. Um, I wouldn't suggest it, but you could. But you can use, I used writing mode. Text orientation will actually let you write like up in like one letter on top of the other one. Um, not super happy with this. This is kind of boring. It's not terrible. My bullets are massive, though, eh? What time is it? Uh, I'm pretty happy with where this is, though, and I do want to finish up in a second. I'm just going to say, and I'm just going to fix this up and add some nicer colors to it, and then I'm going to be done. So another 15 minutes, maybe. Um, and I also need to fix. <laughs> that doesn't work uh, at all. That would have to be in my media query. So for now, I'm going to turn it off so I don't have to deal with that. Um, I do need to fix where that's positioned because I don't like where that is right now. I don't know where to put it either. I almost feel like it would... Aha! Solution. Um, can't I do order? Like four, and it's going to... Is that going to push it all the way to the end? I'd have to give everything in order. What if I just, I could, the two solutions I have, I can change the order. So it's, I, that way I can have it like the subtitle. This should be right after this, but because I'm using this as like a big, massive title area, um, I find it doesn't really fit into there. And I'm also, this is just a background on the H1 itself. So it makes it harder to get it in there as well. Um, and I also like that I can pull it out and put it on the side here like that um, at larger screens. Uh, the questions abound. I'm going to do one thing really fast here. I'm not sure. And again, it, okay, there's my Garamond open saws. I just want to see what this would look like if it was 400 instead of 300. 
I wish there was, this is variable fonts. If you don't know about them, then we could do like a 350. <laughs> It'd be right bang in the middle. Uh, doesn't work. Well, it sort of does work that way. Um, that w that's going to be nice. And actually, I want to make a video on variable fonts, but I haven't had a chance to even use them yet. So I, I want to know what I'm doing with them before I show those in a video. Is it Alec? Alec, thanks. Uh, you recently found my videos. No problem. I'm glad you're here and we're able to join us live. Um, so do I fix the smaller screen size or do I add some colors? <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. I, this big black bowl thing is really, really bothering me. So I'm going to change that color. That's my H1, H1, H1 background. I'm going to do like light blue question mark. Um, and we're going to do background color. We're going to come in here with a background image and hopefully we find a good one URL. If you know me, you know, I like on splash on splash it we'll go a bit bigger 900 by 500 background size cover. Ooh, it's a pretty picture. I've used that for something once. Uh, I don't think it was that exact picture, but it was definitely of that castle. Um, background size cover and background lend mode multiply. I went with the light blue again just because of the colors that are coming in here. What if I multiply might work better actually with some darker colors? Um, I don't think that'll look good. Oops. It's a little too much. I don't think an overlay is going to work very well either. That's not terrible. I'd have to change my text a bit. But if I did that and I did a background attachment fixed and I add a text and shadow. This is a lot of properties on my H1. Text shadow uh, zero, zero, 005 3 pixels RGBA. Zero 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 point three. <laughs> that needs a bit of work. I'm not sure I like that at all. Not the prettiest. Not the prettiest. What if I just made this really big? So it's more of just like a Nah. What if I went with steel blue instead? Steel blue. Steel blue is like a dark blue. That looks a little nicer, eh? If I went with that, maybe. <laughs> I love background attachment fixed. For such a, like, a simple thing, um, it works really well for like a nice little cool effect could even be cooler actually. I don't know if this is going to work, but because it looks like this is sliding up on top of it and I do have a bit of a shadow on my text, um, if I did a box shadow on this as well, but an inset one, zero, I wanted to go up, negative five pixels, 15 pixels. I'm just going to do black now so we can see if we can see it. Um, and actually, I'm, well, it's a little too much, so or GBA of like uh, 0, 0, 0, 0.3. I just want like a really subtle shadow there. So it's like usually you'll see a, a drop shadow on something to show that it's on top, but it's sort of the idea is to, sorry, I hit my mic there. The idea is to give this the effect that it's on top of that. So there's like a little subtle shadow coming from this covering that other picture. Don't know if it works terribly well, but I might make this bigger. It should be pretty subtle. And we'll go something like that, maybe. Just a really subtle shadow there. Okay. This, this, this. I'm going to have to change my margin bottom here. Let's just do zero. So that should come up really nice and close. 
I'm going to do on this a text align center margin top of like 1m margin 2m0 so that sort of links and even 2m0 and like 4m push that down a little bit more I don't like I mind this is working okay together but th this doesn't work well with this like there's this weird break so we'll try one more thing here um, sorry I have a few comments I'm falling behind 18 that's a good question let's see what I'm curious what color that is uh, Lor Lorique Larique, I missed it. There it is. 1806 suggested we try the today's date as the color. It's not a bad color, actually. It goes with that. I wonder, overlay, if we change that to multiply. No, it's going to look the same. Eh? Oh, it's just sort of, actually, it's enough. And it darkens it just enough. The problem with this is it really depends on the image. Uh, the multiply is going to work. It, the multiply takes, I thought I always took the darker color. Where's... I'm getting a little mixed up. Oh no, it multiply takes the lighter color, not the darker color. Yeah. Uh, no, it keeps the darker ones wherever it's darker, so that's why the pink is coming through in the clouds. I forget, no. I just want something a little bit more standout. I'm gonna go back with my steel blue for now, but I don't think it's the best choice, but we'll stick with that for the moment. Um, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do, well, let me just go back to the comments, time to skip class. <laughs> By Kieran. Um, under the image, the norm, I think, but not very creative. I missed a whole bunch of comments. Uh, Paul, I'm guessing you were talking about this to put it under the image, but I'm not. Or you meant the shadow under the image, maybe? I'm not sure. Brianna, no problem for the videos at all. I'm glad you like them. Alec, you've been using Rails in the back end. Um, I'm glad my front end has been helping. No problem at all. The image with a Z index and a white background. Paul, is there a way to add a border on one side of a box on the inside? On the inside of a box? Border left, negative 12, solid red. Um... Did I mess up the multiply? I thought I fixed. I thought I did multiple and then fixed it to multiply. Was I just not using it at all? <laughs> Whoops. Okay, I'll try it again. Let's see if I screwed it all up. That would make sense why it wasn't working properly. Uh. Oh, I did. Sorry, guys. I thought I saw some like purple in the sky there. Oh, it just went to black. Yeah. So it does. It takes the darker color, not the lighter color, of the whatever it is. So I was right about that and with the overlay I think we saw something that way overlay the overlay is a mix of multiply and the other one so it sort of does lights and darks it's the fun one but thanks for correcting me though everybody I had a few of you in there so that's good um okay a couple more minutes on this and I'm gonna be done I'm not gonna get into the colors what I want to do is just take this and do an after. This is all you could add, add a border with an after. This is if I wanted a border on one side, Paul. Actually, I might do it like this with a pseudo element. Um, so I'll do it first on the left, and then we can change it after. Change my after after to the bottom, like I'm going to do. Um, so the content first. It's a pseudo element, so we need content, but I won't have any in this case. Um, I'm also going to come up on here and say that the position is relative. So here I can do position absolute height of one pixel. Or no, I won't do height of one pixel because I said I'll put it on the left. So I can say left zero width. I'll do five pixels, let's say. 
um, background red. Um, height 100%. You can also do like a top and bottom. Um, so if we look at that, oh, I should do a top on there, top zero. Um, so it's on the left and then even I could move it around that way. So the left could be like 50 pixels. So I can choose exactly where I'd want that line positioned. It would be one way to do it. You can also control the height and different things with it a little bit more precisely um, if it is a pseudo element instead of a border. You could do a border left, but you can't bring the border left inwards. You can only, yeah. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna do, a, I'm gonna leave that off. Height is gonna be, I'm gonna start with one pixel. Width is going to be like 50%. And I'm not going to do position absolute. What if I don't do position absolute? What if I just do display block? And then a margin of 2m auto. Zero. The margin 2m on the top is just for that. Now my color here, I wouldn't want to stay red. I'd do this as like light gray. I'd get a more precise color normally, but something like that. Still don't like that this is centered and this isn't centered, but I don't want to center all my text here because I think it looks okay the way it is now. So I don't really feel like centering everything at the other screen size. Um, and how does that look here? That little line looks kind of weird and it would have to be right aligned. Or, yeah, right aligned. So this is in my media query. I have a text align right. Oh, because, oh, because I did this body. There we go, that fixes it. And, and then I can just take this. After display none to turn it off at different screen sizes. There we go. So like that, it's okay. And margin zero. Whoops, not on here. Put that on this one. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this so far. Um, I'm gonna fix this up a little bit. So if you want to follow along with it a bit. Um, I'm definitely going to make uh, some changes to this before I'm finished with it, but not today. Um, I'm going to change some of the colors and some other stuff in here and fix some spacing issues that I'm having, but overall I'm kind of happy with it. I also need to figure out something else to do with that date. I'm not super happy with it, but I think it was fun just experimenting and playing around with a lot of these things and the grid and all of that. Um... Why not center just the headlines? I could center just the headlines, but I don't want the body text centered. And in general, with typography alignment, you don't want to mix alignment. And that's the reason that even this is bothering me. Uh, that centered, centered. Now this centered, and then it's in its own box, so it's not the end of the world. Um, I'm doing that at the large screen size too. Um, but in general, you don't want to mix alignment with typography. I guess I could just have that left aligned and just leave it like that. But in general left is left, center is center. So if I was centering these, then I would center these. And I don't really want to center uh, my body text because there's a lot of body text. And in general, mobile, you can definitely get away with more centered text than at other, uh, than longer things, just because the line lengths tend to be so long, short. Um, but it's still, I, I'm partial to keeping things left aligned. Um, and even like if this was centered, there's a nice break because you have the image, but it's still, for me, it would bug me. Uh, it's getting blurry, so I guess it's my, my internet connection is also telling me time. It's time to be finished here. Um, the, yes, the date. Oh, above the image. Sorry, Dexter, I didn't understand. Uh, yeah, I guess I could do that. Even just like move this up on top, give it like a background or something on it so we could see it. Well, even, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna do that really, really fast. 
uh, nth of type, that's what I'm working on, except I don't want to be in my media query. Um, position relative top of like negative 50%. No, yeah, background white. Uh, except I'd want that width. What if I do a disp display inline block? Or no, that's not going to work, is it? Because it's a grid. Uh, it's. I'm going to have to add some padding. Padding of like 1M. Um, I want it to be a lot smaller though. Uh, or even width 50%. Let's just see what that does. Uh, I think I'm in the grid, right? So align self center. Or not align self. Uh, that, there we go. Mm. Ah, that's not too bad, right? Hey, I, I sort of like that. And then it jumps down to there. I need to fix this up because now I have some issues with the padding and stuff, but I sort of like that. Can I give it a width and max width of like, I don't know, that's going to be too big. Uh, 300? Yeah, I like that. And then it jumps down to there, but I'd fix it up. I'm not going to do that now. That's a cool idea. I like that. I don't know if you meant to have it like up higher on its own. I might turn off that line now and I'd have to fix all my spacing up because now this space is way too big, but uh, sorry, I hit my mic again. That's a nice start, so I appreciate that idea. Uh, yeah, it does look kind of kind of different with the date being all on its own, especially now that it's not set up properly. Um, I was just trying to experiment with a bit of a different look. Maybe I'll maybe now actually that I have this and I sort of like that I'll keep it at all screen sizes actually and I have to change up my grid a little bit to make sure that works but that's okay. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'm gonna go grab some lunch now. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you all for joining me. That was a lot of fun and I'm gonna try and do a couple more of these uh, this summer uh, while I have the time to do them. So yeah, a lot of fun. And I really appreciate that you guys were here and commenting and taking part in it. Uh, it makes it a lot more uh, interactive than obviously a regular video where I just have the, the comments that I can reply to. So um, uh, yeah, um, I'll be save this will be on the channel. Um, can I make this big? There's a display URL. If you want to go to that, uh, eventually that will be updated and you'll be able to see the finished result. I don't know when, but uh, at one point or another, um, this is where you'll be able to find the finished version of it once I am completely done with it. So thank you all for watching. You like the line, Alec? I like the line too. I just don't like that it's float. Maybe I, I almost need to bring it up. Like it would be kind of maybe if it lined up with something. It's just sort of floating there right now. I'd move it closer now that it maybe just so the spacing, I don't know, something I have to bring everything else here up to. I'm glad that you liked it, Dexter. Kingankel, <laughs> glad you enjoyed it. Trav Life, thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. And yeah, have a, have a good one, everybody. Thanks a lot for uh, being here. I really, really had fun.